Welcome to the world of T.J. Hooker, a TV series that started in 1982. It follows the life of a police officer named T.J. Hooker, who, after a personal tragedy, decides to go back to his old job as a patrol sergeant. The show stars William Shatner as Hooker, bringing his unique style to the character. Many viewers find Shatner's performance as their favorite because of his dedication to the role. As for memorable moments, the series is filled with scenes that stick with you, whether it's Hooker's passionate speeches about justice or the intense chases and arrests. These moments show the tough yet caring side of law enforcement. Now, we're curious about you. What's your most memorable moment from TJ Hooker? Maybe it's a scene that made you laugh, or perhaps one that surprised you or even made you sad. We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments. Your experiences add to the rich history of this show. Keep watching because there are many more funny, shocking, and sad facts to come. Let's keep the conversation going. What's your story? Partner Kel. Jastro. At the kitty part. The television series TJ Hooker, which aired in the early 1980s, is often remembered for its dramatic portrayal of law enforcement and the charismatic lead William Shatner, who played the titular character. While some viewers may critique the depth of the acting and the writing, the show has its merits in the action-packed sequences and the dedication of the characters to justice. The series is a product of its time, featuring the style and sensibilities of the 1980s, including the car chases and explosive moments that were hallmarks of the era's television. It's a departure from the more serious police procedural dramas, instead offering a more straightforward approach to storytelling where the focus is on the pursuit of criminals. The show's legacy continues to be appreciated by fans who enjoy the nostalgia and the straightforward depiction of good versus evil. This isn't a fraternity that inherits you because you had a blood relative who wore the shield. In the early 80s, a crime drama series captivated audiences with its portrayal of the daily challenges faced by police officers. At the heart of the show was a character envisioned by writer Rick Husky, who saw no one else but William Shatner fit for the role. The episode titled The Lipstick Killer coincided with significant events, the introduction of a new area code, and the birth of actor Max Rima Lieutenant. The series also served as a crossover nexus for actors who had roles in the Star Trek universe. Notable appearances include Vic Tabak, Gary Graham, and Leonard Nimoy, among others, highlighting the shared space between the two popular franchises. This connection extended to other actors like Ray Wise and Miguel Fur, who brought depth to their characters in both universes. The interplay of talent between the series and Star Trek underscored a unique synergy as actors transitioned from portraying officers of the law to explorers of the final frontier. School tomorrow. You'll never go back to sleep. In the action-packed scenes of Patrol, Officers Romano and Hooker are often shown without seat belts, a detail that contrasts sharply with today's standards of safety. The show typically unfolds with a crime being committed, leading to a pursuit that initially ends with the suspect evading capture due to Hooker's driving mishaps. The narrative then shifts to investigative efforts by Hooker and his team, while the perpetrator continues their criminal spree. The climax often sees another chase, culminating in either the apprehension or demise of the suspect. Adding to the drama, both Lee Bryant and William Shatner have portrayed characters in distress during flight-related incidents, with Shatner's roles spanning from a troubled traveler in the Twilight Zone to a similar predicament in the comedic sequel of Airplane. What makes you so sure Jane Doe wasn't a junkie? Hair, clothes, fingernails clean, neat. In the show, the character Jim Corrigan, portrayed by James Darren, shares his name with the DC Comics character's human host, the Spectre. This is not the only detail that adds depth to the series. The patrol car, a 1977 Dodge Monaco, often seen emitting smoke during high-speed chases, was actually a high-mileage vehicle previously used by police agencies. This detail reflects the authenticity of the time as the Los Angeles Police Department had already transitioned to newer models like the Dodge Diplomat and Ford Crown Victoria. Additionally, the lead character's surname pays tribute to Civil War Union General Joseph Hooker, linking the show to a historical figure known for his leadership. In the show, the portrayal of police attire was consistent, with characters donning long sleeve shirts, ties, and during colder seasons, heavy jackets. Notably absent were short sleeved uniforms or hats. 
The lead actor's romantic interests were often significantly younger, reflecting a pattern seen in his personal life, with successive spouses being younger than him. On screen, the character often found himself wounded in the right shoulder, a recurring event throughout the series. To a coin collector, not to a fence. Your in an interesting twist of reality versus perception, actor Richard Hurd was actually younger than his co-star William Shatner, despite any impressions to the contrary. The show made its debut shortly after the completion of Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, with the first season being broadcast while the movie was still in the editing phase. In a nod to creating a unique identity, the series chose to set its stories within the confines of the fictional LCPD drawing a clear line from the real-life Los Angeles Police Department despite sharing a similar aesthetic in uniforms and patrol cars. This choice mirrored the approach taken by the creator's earlier work on SWAT, which also featured a made-up police department known as WCPD. Listen, baby, you already got what you want. You're riding with us. So, why don't you leave? In the streets of Los Angeles, patrol cars are a common sight, each with its own story. One such vehicle, numbered 49E357, is regularly manned by two dedicated officers known for their commitment to law and order. They operate under the unit number 4 Adam 30, a designation that speaks to their place within the city's policing structure. Their colleagues in another vehicle, identified as 4 Adam 16, share a similar dedication to their specific sector of the division. The numbering system is a legacy of the city's policing history, tracing back to the early days of the 20th century. Each number tells the tale of a station's past, from the central hub at 100 West 1st Street to the now deactivated Lincoln Heights Station, and on to the current list that includes the likes of Hollywood, Wilshire, and the Harbor Division, among others. This system not only identifies the station, but also the type of unit, whether it's a two-officer patrol, a motorcycle unit, or a detective team, each playing a crucial role in the fabric of Los Angeles law enforcement. Amidst this backdrop, one officer, known for his roles beyond the badge, once took to the stage in a different uniform, poking fun at political figures and even his own passionate fan base. His sharp wit and the memorable phrase, get a life, resonated with audiences, reflecting a lighter side to a man often seen in the serious light of public service and space exploration. His ability to laugh at himself and the world around him added a human touch to his public persona, one that would later be immortalized in the title of his memoir, dedicated to the very fans he once playfully chided. Your job of running it into the ground. Look at these numbers. In the early 1980s, a show captured the audience's attention with its portrayal of the challenges and triumphs of law enforcement officers. William Shatner, already a familiar face to television viewers, took on the lead role, showcasing the day-to-day -day life of a dedicated police sergeant. At the same time, Heather Locklear was making waves, balancing her time between two popular television series, demonstrating her skill and dedication as an actor. Adding a personal touch to the series, William Shatner's daughter, Elizabeth Shatner, contributed her writing talents to an episode, further enriching the show's narrative and connecting the cast and crew in a unique, familial way. This series not only provided entertainment, but also shed light on the personal lives and professional commitments of those in the law enforcement community. It looks like him, but I just can't be sure. Would it help to see him? In a notable crossover of careers, William Shatner shared the screen with Heather Locklear in an episode of Boston Legal years after their initial collaboration. The show saw various cast shifts, including the introduction of Officer Jim Corrigan and the final appearance of Captain Sheridan. Heather Locklear's portrayal of Stacey Sheridan aired on her 21st birthday, marking a memorable moment in television history. Additionally, the character of Lieutenant Pete O'Brien was introduced, revealing his backstory and connection to the series' narrative. Locklear's career spanned several iconic roles, cementing her status as a familiar face on television screens. The series also touched on personal storylines, such as Fran Hooker's move to Oregon, adding depth to the character's backstories. These elements combined to create a series that resonated with audiences, leaving a lasting impression on the landscape of 1980s television. Nice tackle, kid. Could have made first round draft choice.